they will be very excited because they are like imagine what their next plan will be what their next house is going to be right tell their agent oh actually i realized that i have a penalty for like, my bank loan Hello everybody, hi, today we are at our studio with our guest Yu Rong here. So for those who don't know, for the past few weeks, we have been following Yu Rong to go through the process of understanding how a property is sold. So over the past few weeks, if you haven't been watching our previous episode, we have been following Yu Rong to go through his process of selling two properties at one Canberra and he managed to sell the unit within less than a month of marketing the unit. So today here, we will go in depth about the strategy behind how he do it and why he do certain things. Right. So for Yu Rong, right, he has been around the industry for eight years with Popnex Realty. So Yu Rong, thank you to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So maybe you want to introduce yourself, right, to our audience, like, uh, what do you do? Why you do real estate? Uh, what do you do outside real estate? Okay, sure. So uh, basically, I like I want to you know I help my clients make their best real estate decisions, right? So that they can bring them joy and also like grow their wealth. Uh, why I joined real estate was because actually uh, nineteen years old, when I was nineteen, I made my first. I thought it was an investment uh, after reading the book Rich Dad Poor Dad. So I was very motivated to you know like uh, become rich. So I thought investment was the way. Uh, so. What happened was actually I invested in a Ponzi scheme, which I didn't know was a scam. It just felt like a very great investment. So I lost all my savings then. Also some of my parents' savings. So I felt very bad, right? So it prompted me that, hey, you know, I need to, you know, like uh, be more knowledgeable in the realm of like, you know, like financial instruments. And that's why I joined real estate lah, and build up like skill sets like financial planning, risk management, data analysis, so that I don't meet somebody that give me the wrong advice or, you know, like, things again. Mm. So it was a very painful experience. Ah, uh, okay, okay. So for those who don't know, right, actually I know Yu Rong for like eight, eight plus years already. So before he even joined as a real estate agent, I already know know him and uh, I seen him grow as a real estate agent. So so the thing is, right, um, when we are following Yu Rong over the past few weeks, right, uh, there are a few things uh, from a real estate agent perspective, right, that he will do. So maybe you want to share like for, for we, because we are following two units, ma, two units uh, selling at one Canberra, right? For one of them is Aaron, the other one is Zhang Yi, right? Joe, okay? So the thing is, right, um, before you consult any of your client, what exactly will go? Will you go through? Is there a process that you will go through? Is there like uh, what what step by step process that you have to go through before you actually do any selling? Yeah. Okay. So usually, uh, I will say that you know, like uh, whenever my whenever there's some inquiry, you know, or like my clients ping me out and say, you know, I have a property that I want to sell, or I have some property plans, or I want to buy a property, right? I will say, okay, let's have a sit down consultation first, mm -hmm. right? Uh, where we find out, you know, like what is actually the objective of my clients, right? So a lot of times, I will say that like uh, a lot of clients they like to just execute as soon as possible. I something that I want to sell, I want to sell quickly, or I want to just buy, so I want to see as many properties as soon as possible. But if we were to be able to sit back, right, and really look at things from a big picture, right, we are able to uh, execute very smoothly, right, taking away all the possible obstacles, such that we only take the important steps, then we can actually achieve our goal much faster, right? So during the consultation, let's say for example, uh, if a client is doing like a selling and buying, right, we actually want to understand a bit more on like what's the objective first, right? After that, we also want to find out uh, certain things regarding like financial, like for example, uh, whether the client is still under seller stamp duty, you know, like if he sells now, is he in a lock-in period for his loan package? Will he have a penalty because of that, right? Uh, uh, logistic wise after he sells ready does he have a temporary place to stay is he shifting to a parent's place is he planning to rent or actually he needs to maybe you know like rent back from the buyer that he sells to or like have an extension so that he can transit smoothly to the next house right so when we know all these things then we are able to plan the selling process right accordingly to these uh, circumstances so that the entire process right will be uh, more peaceful more smooth for the clients. If not, they will have, you know, like a lot of a lot of times, right? They start selling already. Only at the point of closing or after closing, then they tell their agent, oh, actually, I realize that I have a penalty for like, my bank loan. Uh, actually, I need to, you know, like uh, 
have additional extension for my buyers then it causes a lot of stress for you know like uh, for themselves and also for the agents and so for the buyers because now they have to troubleshoot whatever that we could have prevented if we have a proper consultation uh, yeah. right mm. so i think uh buying and selling a property is a huge decision for a lot of people right so a lot of them will really engage a good real estate agent or someone who really knows what they are doing to really consult and advise them accordingly because from what i hear it's really that there's so many steps required before the property is being sold or even after a property is sold right there are so many steps that needs to be properly done up before the whole transaction can actually go through, right? So, so in the context of Aaron's and Joe, right, right, uh, the two units at one camera that you managed to sell. So, uh, what was it that you consulted them on, and uh, how, how? What are the in two different scenarios for two units? What 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 happened? Uh, okay. So for Aaron Wise, you know that like we found out that like his objective was like uh. He wants to move closer to the parents' place, and then also like the next house to be near one of the primary schools that he he wants to be in, la. right? So it's purely from like a own stay count kind of decision. Mm -hmm. uh, he doesn't have like a strong need for capital appreciation, but he would like to have you know like go into a property that you know at least you know preserve his property value over the long term, mm -hmm. right? At least for the next you know like ten years that he will be there. Right, so that's the objective. So after after we understand objective ready, we also do some financial analysis first, right, to make sure that uh we understand how much loan they can take, you know, how much CPF they can, they are able to utilize, uh, including those after they are sold off the current property, right. We also you know like uh look through the monthly installment calculation to see is it something they are comfortable of not. So when we do this uh process right for the financial calculation for the next purchase, right, we then establish what we call like a budget, mm -hmm. right. Then from there then the clients can actually decide okay yeah it makes sense for me to execute now or it don't make sense for me to execute because i probably couldn't buy something that i want to buy or i need to change my strategy versus they start selling already then go and think about the buying portion mm. Mm. so for aaron's side to continue right would be uh so after we've done that already so basically we just consulted i just share with him you know like what is the my uh pvp strategy on selling properties Right, so I go through that with them, and then uh, once they're okay, then we started the process already. Mm. So you're talking about uh, PPP. Can you can you elaborate more on this? What what do you mean by PPP? Sure. So for PPP, right, basically is uh publicity, positioning, and pricing. Right. So all this is just basically to you know overcome the the problems that usually a seller will face when selling their properties. So most of the time, when a when when a seller you know wants to market the unit, right, they will be very excited because they are like imagine what their next plan will be, what their next house is going to be, right. But like one to two months down the road, if their property is still not sold yet, then or like you know like, uh when there are like no viewings, like no very little viewers, or like not getting the offers that is very far away from their expectation, then they will start to like panic. Right. So all these things uh could be could be prevented, you know, like if we have done, you know, the marketing properly, you know, like uh before we even execute, you know, the entire selling process. Right. So, so can, can, can you elaborate more about all these three different points? Sure. Sure. So I think like let's start off with uh the first P first, which is like positioning, right? So I think a lot of times uh uh when sellers sell their house, right, they don't position the best the, the best self, you know, like uh, before they start selling. So it's like, we go for a very important interview, right? We'll definitely prepare for interview. We will groom ourselves, right? But a lot of times, if you go and browse a lot of online portals, you will see those like pictures, right? You don't feel like the owner is like really that serious in selling because the, the, the houses are cluttered, right? Or like it's taken from a weird angle, it's like blurry and all that, right? And they are selling, all these properties are like a million dollars, two million dollars or even higher in pricing, right? But the key thing is, because buyers do got, have no imagination, Right, and we are all very busy in Singapore. You browse through, like, you know, like uh, so many hundreds and thousands of properties online, but you will only filter the top choices to actually inspect physically, right? So, for positioning, basically, I think number one, the most basic thing that uh, all sellers should do, right, is always to declutter their space first, you know, like keep things neat, right? Of course, we want to do 80 20 effort, lah, right? Basically, we just want to clear off things that are outside that is very visible, and if you're storeroom or like your wardrobe is messy is fine but outside you know on the on tabletop dining table bed sofa all this as long as it's neat it gives a pleasant experience right so if you if, if the house is neat then i can take good pictures right right because yeah, i can bring a professional camera crew but if it's very cluttered i will just amplify how cluttered <laughs> the house is so that's definitely the the basic uh 
but a lot of owners still don't do that right and i think second thing will be uh sometimes the house uh, might just be in a state that it is better to have like a quick makeover mm. uh, for example that will apply to like a uh, joe's unit right because he has like a young family right he loves uh, his uh, daughters a lot right so they can freely do the on the walls of the house right so when we are selling right, and it's moving out right so i actually advise that hey let's let's do a repainting of the whole house just a simple white paint so it can spruce up and show that hey you know like this is just like a five-year-old condo right and because it moved out already another thing that we can add on in terms of positioning which is like when you move out you move out all your furniture is correct and and buyers cannot visualize how an empty house feel like because uh, empty house feels very cold i don't know whether it can fit in what kind of sofa size what kind of bed size and that's why we have like a home staging to come in to decorate up the space so that people can visualize uh, the, the space effectiveness the utilization of it help them to visualize the coziness of how it can be a potential home for them mm. so this will be positioning mm. what about the other points okay uh the, the next portion already you know once we position it well then we can move on to publicity publicity basically is uh is falls under the marketing part la, right so a lot of times people are not getting viewers right just because the marketing is not strong enough to actually be able to outreach to the buyers that they are that they are suitable for their units right so for example people just think i know nowadays selling houses is very simple agent job is very simple right you just take a few pictures with your camera right and then you post it online and then you will close the deal correct but it doesn't work that way anymore nowadays because with technology right the good thing is we can reach out to more potential buyers than we can last time in the newspaper era right and we can reach out to uh more people in a more cost effective manner right but if you are not able to do it correctly right we are the, the advertisement will just be drowned in the sea of competition people won't even know that uh, you are selling if the advertisement is not done correctly right? so after we do all this decluttering and all that right then i can have professional crew to come in to take wide angle professional pictures i don't use my iphone to take pictures right reason is because you can actually capture the space better with wide angle uh and actually online right people basically just shortlist based on two things your price or you know like uh at, at the first glance right actually how well the pictures are taken right that will first capture attention right if i can capture the attention already then i will able to you know like bombard them with more details on like why they should come explore this space so that's why we have also professional virtual tour you know professional virtual tour basically they are able to preview the entire space they can go into different bedrooms they can zoom in zoom out uh they can actually see how the house looks like before even coming to the actual space right uh so virtual tour is proven to you know like generate about like you know like five to ten more times more inquiries right depending on the portals right for srx there was a uh, you can generate up to uh, 19 times more inquiries right and uh virtual tour basically right is like just imagine right i remember last time when i was trying to when i was trying to buy my own car right so i was as a buyer i very self-excited i mean i would do my own research right and i always like those uh car companies right that give me a lot of visuals a lot of information uh about about the the specs of the cars right because it helped me to convince myself why the car is so good and so you know how i should buy this car even before i go down to the showroom right and so so it applies the same thing for property right the more information we are able to give the more we are allowed the the buyers to preview the more they will fall in love with the place and think hey this house i think right is a very good chance that it will it will it will be suitable for so when they come down there's a higher chance that they want to buy this property right and also like good description are very important right you know like they have no time to go and search they want to find a place that is like convenient so they want to know where's the how to get to the mrt station where's the nearest mall what's the amenities they want to know whether that's future growth any any uh new things that are coming up maybe it's new mrt new malls maybe it's like a new regional center etc so all these things uh, will be important to them or like you know what's so good about like this unit maybe it's a high floor it's newly renovated mm. Mm. so what is the last point that yeah. uh that, that under the three p's okay so okay be before i wrap up our publicity actually there's still one more thing that is very important right actually one of the most important is about like how the advertisement rank within the online portals itself right so if let's say we are if let's say you're searching for something at google correct if you can find your results on page one you wouldn't go to check out the third page or the fourth page right mm -hmm. right so property portals we also want to rank our advertisement high such that you know like when uh the the buyer search you know our advertisement actually pop up 
right? In, in, in short, if let's say, you know, like agents are willing to just pay more and, you know, like uh, repost, boost the listings, right? Your listings will be shown much more frequently. And that's how you actually get more buyers uh, to the door. Mm. Yeah. So last point, right, is actually pricing, right? Uh, pricing is also very important, right? So psychological wise, you know, like uh, all sellers will want to sell at the highest price that they can, right? Correct, right? So a lot of times, you know, like uh, many sellers will adopt this strategy of, hey, you know, like let's test out the market first. So we, they, they test out with a very high price, right? And then the, the mindset is, yeah, if I don't get this price, I then adjust accordingly downwards, right? So sometimes this uh, on paper sounds like a good strategy, uh, but actually it is not so beneficial. Okay, why do I say that? Because actually nowadays, right, if you use portals, you also know that Actually, every porter tells you what is the recent transaction price. You are very easily you can compare it in the same condo. What are others selling for? What has been transacted for in other condos? What have been selling for? Right. So I always share that uh, when we sell a house, we actually get the most attention from the marketplace. Right. When we first launch uh, the unit. Right. So imagine, right. If let's say you are like a very serious buyer looking for a very specific location. Will you continue to monitor this area to see is there any new properties coming up? Yes. You will, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then you're very serious already. You see everything, everything don't suit you. So every time when there's new thing come up, will you be very excited? You will, right? I right. want to go and view. You want to go and view, right? And then these are the people that are actually very serious. So I always say that you only have one time to launch your unit into the market, right? And when you launch it, it's the most exciting phase because you have buyers that couldn't find a space waiting for you, knowing what they want, and then they have budget, they know what their budget is, they have their loan approval already, right? So you're going to attract the most serious group of buyers to come in, and they're going to give you a serious offer, right? But in exchange, right, the seller will think, wow, maybe I first see your marketing, I can get this kind of pricing already, I should wait it out, and I'll get higher, correct? But in reality is that like, most of the time, the first offer will be the best offer. If the marketing has been done right, Okay, uh, reason is because, right, you get the most attention, you know, at the first, you know, like 30 days of your marketing, you will attract the most serious buyers. So I will always say that pricing wise, right, we don't want to price uh, out of the price range. We want to price it not cheap, but competitively, right, such that, right, in reverse, right, we attract more of such serious buyers, right? So imagine uh, if today you come to see a property viewing, uh, you only know that you are having a private view, only yourself viewing. Versus you know that there are other contenders that are maybe as serious as you seeing the house. Which one will make you have the urgency to take action on the property? When you view yourself or like when you know that there are other contenders? When there are other contenders. Right. So you will, you will say, if I don't, if I like this space, if I don't take action, I don't make an offer, maybe, I will, maybe tomorrow this house is no, no longer okay, available. So, right? so basically all this competition, right, in reversely, will actually, you know, like, get better pricing for the owners because if there is more than one buyer that is interested it could become like who can give the best offer correct yeah. so 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 for 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 aaron and joe's context hmm. right yeah. these two units are launched at almost about the same time correct. Correct. right so maybe uh can you just share right how long did you take to prep these two units and how long does the whole process of marketing selling and then manage to get the unit so Right, just an estimate. Uh, okay, so prepping part usually, you know, like uh, usually the owners will have about roughly about like one to two weeks, you know, for them to just tidy up the space. Of course, some owners I say, okay, I need one month. Then we just have one month of prepping space. Also, the the prep time is more for like how long they will need. So for for Aaron, I think it was about two weeks. Mm -hmm. Uh. For Joe wise, because he's planning, uh, he has renting first. So actually we rented a place for Joe first mm -hmm. and then he moved everything up, mm -hmm. right? And then uh, in terms of uh, what are the things that we prep, right? For example, we need to do painting, we need to do home staging. So that takes about like, you know, like close to one and a half weeks to two weeks for Joe's unit, mm -hmm. right? And then once that's done, we will have the video team to come down to, you know, like uh, shoot the virtual tour, shoot the uh, photos and the video. So all that will be one week. So in, in, in short, I would say that usually uh, most people take about one to two weeks to prepare and declutter themselves. Mm -hmm. I will take another one and a half weeks to two weeks to get all the marketing done and we will launch ready. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, so for, for their case, right? Mm. After you launch. Yeah. So, okay. uh, yeah. so after we launch, uh, so we already have offers come in uh, after about one and a half weeks of marketing. Mm. So we have, uh, I think in total, 14 to 16 group of people that came to view mm. both units. Yeah. Uh, so, so at least that means uh, the, you, you get offers coming in within one and one and a half weeks and Correct. then the negotiation uh, takes about how long? Uh, negotiation was uh, was a few days. Mm. Yeah. So there was an offer that came in. Then I, I, I mean like, I, so all offers are being put up to the owners, right? Uh, then I, of course for Joe's unit, there was only one offer. For Aaron's unit, there was like two offers, right? Uh, so from then on, then we come up with a strategy to counter offer all those uh, buyers that came in uh, mm. to arrive at the final pricing. Yeah. Yeah. So 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 once the owners accepted, right? Mm. So then that will be the next plan, right? What, what 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 do you have for them? Okay. So uh for Aaron wise, right? So right now we are going to explore places that are near the parents' place, mm. uh that fit what they want. They're basically uh, for them because it's for own stay, right? So amenities, you know, MRT is the most important. Mm. Uh, and of course, you know, like within one kilometer of the school, mm. right? So this will be the hard criteria that are like non-negotiable. Mm. Yeah. Uh, that that we are that I will be recommending you know like houses that are suitable for them mm -hmm. to execute right uh, for Joe's wise basically they already have the rental place settled already mm -hmm. you know like just for the for the primary school administration right uh, and then for us we are I will just be presenting to them you know like uh, two good deals that you know they can actually consider that fits the investment objective so that will be the next plan. Uh. So, so for, for these two different plans, right? Uh, what are the, uh, why you recommend or how they should be taking certain criteria into consideration? So by starting with Aaron, if they were to sell and mm. then they are looking at, uh, somewhere to stay for their own, own stay. Right? Mm. So what are the things to consider? Okay. So things to consider generally, I would say that, uh, entry price is always the, are most important mm. so like you can you can buy any location but you if you enter at overpriced kind of pricing then the risk level is higher la. so the the, the the pricing why it will be for me uh to help them to analyze using you know like recent done transactions right and 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 the price trend of the current condo that I'm looking at to advise them whether is it the correct entry price or not right mm. uh if it's not the correct entry price uh but because of the availability they still want to buy at least they they know they make an informed decision that you know like it's because they want this and they know like you know like statistic is like that and they still want to go in then it will be to their decision uh, but other 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 factors that are important one usually let's say uh i would say that if the 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 condo should not be like too old like maybe like more than 25 years if it's a leasehold property mm -hmm. right uh reason is because the older it gets right it is uh, the, the number of potential buyer actually reduces either because of the upkeep of the property, right? Or because of like, you know, like uh, there will be limitation in terms of their CPF usage. Mm. Okay, so you have like a smaller buyer pool. Uh, but if let's say, you know, like sometimes, you know, like uh, to, to counter, if let's say, you know, you like uh, older property, right? Uh, just because of location, right? Then it, it must be attractive in comparison, meaning for example, if it's near to nearer to MRT station, it's nearer to amenities like malls, right? Uh, and uh, the land size is good, right? Which means that you have like more facilities in the condo itself. Or like when the land size is good and then like all the units are very big, you will know that hey, there is uh, there's a chance that it might be unblocked. So all these factors will give you a exit strategy. So I think importantly is that when you buy a house, you must think of next time, in like five years time, ten years time, or anyone to sell. Is there a market mm -hmm. that you no know, like people want to buy from you or not? Mm -hmm. So so that means not only for own stay unit we need to think about the convenience, but we also need to think about the like exit strategy. Whether yeah. is it to sell this and then buy another unit, or sell this to mm -hmm. rent another buy and rent another unit and buy uh, investment property. Yeah. So there's a lot of strategy after strategy down the road. Uh. I, I think I think to keep it simple is like, I think like at least you want to buy something that you know like you are confident that in next time when you want to sell there will still be a market for it mm. right even though i know that a lot of uh, people who are buying for own stay usually they'll be thinking hey, you don't think so much like i'm just buying for stay one mm. right or, or like as long as you like it then you just buy. yeah as long as i buy yes you can do that of course you just have to know 
uh, I just like to keep them informed on what is the risk. And if they are okay with the risk, then that's still okay, right? But I think the key thing about exit strategy is sometimes uh, buyers might also think that I won't sell one, I will surely retire, right? But what we want in life is choice and option that for whatever reason, you know, like uh, things change and we want to sell, we can, we can still sell and there is a market for it, such that we don't have to sell at a depressed price. Because actually in Singapore, we have gone through this entire, an, an entire, you know, like so many years, right? People just expect that like price will keep going up and going up and going up, right? But a lot of, some of the properties, you know, like, that they have is like leasehold property. Ma. So eventually a leasehold property when it goes to zero, the value is zero dollars. Right, I'm not saying don't buy leasehold property. Actually, some leasehold, a lot of leasehold properties make better investment than freehold property. But what I'm saying is that like we want to know when we exit there is a marketplace. I think that's the that's the important mm. takeaway. Mm. Mm. So I guess there is a lot of strategy within the strategy that, mm. and a lot of factors to take into consideration. Yeah. Not just buy something you like and for convenience, but also to buy something you like and for convenience, yet thinking about what is next. Mm, correct. I'll, I'll, I'll just say actually, what I say is correct. Right? Basically, I think like the, the, the devil is in the details, right? Uh, a lot of people don't pling, don't don't think long-term enough or think beyond the current property they buy, right? And uh, when you work with somebody uh, that knows how to fit the right uh, strategy to implement specifically to your objective, then it will make your entire transition smoother, mm. right? Uh, less stress, and you will be able to hit your objective. Lor. So one, one, another one of the things is like, you know, like uh, how to structure the deal is also another thing to consider. What do you mean by structure the deal? Okay, so for example, right? So sometimes when you sell a property already, then you have a decision to make, right? Okay, so you have like, usually uh, it's a couple, ma, right? Then you can decide, am I going to buy the next house? Am I going to buy two properties or am I going to buy one property? Mm. Right? If you want to buy two properties, then usually we know that each property will be owned by one spouse so that you don't have to uh, pay the additional buyer stamp duty. Mm. Correct? Right? Or sometimes, uh, not all people will be comfortable you know, to go straight into buying two properties because uh, maybe they are not ready at a point of time financially, right? So they will decide, okay, I need to buy under both names first with the choice of maybe decoupling, you know, like three years down the road or like five years down the road. Of course, three, years, three to five years down the road, if they eventually decide that they want to sell, that's the easier portion than, than, than decoupling, right? Then if we talk about decoupling, right? Then a lot of times people will just, you know, like in, in the marketplace, we always talk about like, oh, you can structure the deal 99% and 1%. Mm. So the 1% is the one that uh, is easier to decouple on, mm. right? But actually for most people, 99% to 1%, right? They actually never structure it correctly. It doesn't work for most people, right? Because the, the, the simple concept of 99% and 1% is so that the 1% owner wants to exit easily, mm. correct? So, but the key thing is for most people, when they structure 2%, right? It's because the 1% or they need the 1%'s owner's CPF in order to finance the down payment mm. or the ongoing monthly installment. Right. So just imagine, just for simple illustration, right? Uh, the property is one million dollars. One percent is ten thousand mm. dollars, right? And the one percent owner use hundred fifty k of CPF already, right? So it creates a situation where the owner owns one percent, but he use up to fifteen percent of the equity already. So what it means? It means that this person won't be able to decouple. Very hard to decouple. Why? Because ah. Uh, you won't be able to finance the difference between the 1%, which is $10,000, and the 150K that you use, right? You won't be able to finance through loan. You cannot finance through CPF. You can only finance through cash to buy out this person because they need to return the CPF, right? So in such a case, they won't be able to decouple. They should have, uh, for this kind of uh, buyers, they should have considered, anticipate, okay, if I were to decouple, maybe it will be the third year or the fifth year. Then I can calculate backwards on what is, how much CPF they are going to use. And we want to structure the CPF usage accordingly and proportionally right, to the ownership. So for example, this person by benefit structuring the deal as 80%, 20%. Yeah, so that it's easier for them to decouple because now whatever CPF that he has used can also be bought out using uh, partially by loan and partially by CPF and not just fully cash. Right. If not, there's no point doing 99.1 rate. He could have just bought at 100%. Mm. Yeah. Okay. 
So, 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 is there a, uh, what is the difference for Aaron's strategy and for Joe's strategy? Mm, okay. So for, I think like for, for, for Joe wise, he, he is a uh, very, uh, it's very clear cut that, you know, like, uh, the, the growth element is also very important in his planning, right? That's why, uh, uh, I suggested that, you know, like we do the buy to invest, rent to stay, right? Uh, and also because rent to stay, because the area that he wants, the, the, the school that he wants to go, they are all very old leasehold properties, mm. right? And of course the concern will be if, I, if they buy a leasehold property that is already quite old and I'm going to stay there for about another 10 more years, which is going to make it older. Whether at a point of time, uh, the, the pricing can still hold or not for that property, right? So in order to mitigate this risk, we will rent in that location. We will pass down the risk to the landlords, right? Because they are the one that uh, owns the property, right? And then they can actually, you know, like, uh, not to be limited by the criteria they have to be in a specific location, you know, they are able to put their money at where the growth areas are. So imagine if you are investing your money, if you don't have other consideration, you really just want to place it on places that have the most growth, mm. right? But when, uh, that, that, that place that you own also needs to fulfill certain own state criteria, right? Then your own state criteria will actually precede, right? The, the investment portion, yeah. Yeah. such that most of the time, the investment portion is almost, uh, you won't even consider it already, or like it's very little consideration. So you won't really meet the objective. So we want to speed it up. Mm. So, so for convenience or for, for flexibility, mm. uh, perspective, right? So that's, that's why they rent where they will have a lot more choices, temporary, at least for two years, right? They are renting for two years. Uh, we are renting for two years. And uh, we, I mean, we rent, we rent from an owner that uh, has, how to say, like a, we rent from an owner that is quite certain he has no, he doesn't want to sell. Mm. So we also plan that, you know, like we will want to continue to renew. Uh, so we after the rent for two years with the potential to extend for another two years, yes. right? Near the primary school. And then whatever, when they sell this property, whatever proceed they have, they will have more choices and have more uh, resources for them to have the options to invest. They can, uh. they can actually buy anywhere in Singapore rather than, you know, just within one kilometers mm. of, the, of, of the school. Uh. Mm. Yeah, so what is that strategy for, for, for them after they rent? Yeah, what, what do you have for them moving forward? Maybe you can elaborate more. Mm. What do I have for them as in like, what are they planning to buy? Yeah. Okay, so basically we are, we are initially we actually have already decided, you know, like what we, what is a good property that we want to, you know, like actually like uh, invest in, right? Unfortunately, uh, that project is like almost fully sold already and like there are no good yeah, units. You're talking about new launch. Uh, for him, uh, will be new launch, right? Uh, so coming back to new launch is that, so I say basically the original plan that was a specific project, la, right? And then uh, most of the units left uh, are not the recommended units, right? So that's why we have a change of plan now. So as in change to other new launch project or a resale project or what? Uh, it was, we are, we are targeting some, uh, we, are, we are targeting one that is uh, upcoming that, that is like possibly, you know, like uh, to have like a good deal. And, uh, okay, so coming back to, you know, like this new launch, right? So usually in my perspective, you know, like from, uh, from an investment angle, right? You can also apply the 80 20 rule, mm -hmm. right? That out of 80% uh, of the launches, they are not so suitable for investment. But it will really fit your own stay criteria, mm -hmm. right? So you're looking for growth, then you will not want to buy all these projects, right? And then within the project itself, uh, because let's say for example, the same bedroom type, let's say you want to buy a three bedroom, right? For a new launch, right? Actually developers price the same three bedrooms, right? At different stacks or like what I call different units, right? With different facing, they price it differently. So for example, a three bedroom that is pool facing or like versus a three bedroom that is like road facing versus a three bedroom that is uh, unblocked landed facing. The, 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 the units, maybe it's the same size, similar floor plan, but they can vary maybe 150K kind of difference, mm -hmm. right? But if you're buying for own stay, people will think that, hey, you know, like it is uh, worth paying for the differential, right? Mm -hmm. But from an investment angle, most of the times, uh, the, 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 premium will, the premium will not be justified. And hence, we, from an investment standpoint, we want to buy something 
that I know that once I enter, I have a certainty that I can sell at other people's entry price and I still have a profit, mm. right? I saw, but I, of course, I must pick properties with no uh, negative attributes uh, that will make it hard to sell in the future. So after considering all this, this will allow my risk to be lower because I don't need the market to move for us to make a profit, mm. right? But if the market do move, then I will have more profits. Correct, because there's the market momentum and there's the price, original price differential mm. between the, the, the units really. So are, are you saying for new launch, not all new launch can buy, even those new launch that you can buy, not all units you can buy because of the facing, because of the pricing, the, the developer price. And you try to, from a own stay perspective, right? Uh, people will buy those pool facing for the premium but for investment perspective like Joe doesn't mean that uh, he, he he will buy any of the units or any of the facing right yeah, yeah. okay I'll, I'll say generally it's like not saying that like not all units can buy right uh, that's not what I meant what I meant is that like most not all units are actually investment grade mm. right so if your objective is to buy from an investment angle mm. then you want to choose units or projects that fall under the investment grade criteria because that is your selection process right mm. but if you are buying for own stay you know it's like how, how do i say like you you just buy something that you uh that you enjoy that you will love right that fits your family outcome you don't tell like a ferrari owner about fuel consumption right because they don't care right so it really depends on the objective but of course there are some uh layouts that are really not very well utilized right? and then all these things will be definitely good to avoid like mm. Understand. definitely good to avoid because it will be hard to sell so usually we for new launches i would say like avoid really those that you know like have very strong negative attributes right that make it hard to resell in the future like same thing you want to know that there is a market to sell to if not the rest if you're just buying for own stay right the key element will just be the entry price you know like buy into an entry price that is uh more fair value right that you know you're buying for own stay so the market fluctuation when you're staying there for the next five to ten years it doesn't really matter Mm. right as long as you have holding power mm. correct so you buy something that you love because the investment portion is not the main objective right but of course if you are buying for investment then the entry price becomes very important mm. right it's like a business like that right so if you have more uh more cost up front then you will you will have lesser profit or you will need to have more risk to get the same amount of profit right so it's really boils down to the objective also mm. so so coming back to joe right uh because you were talking about new launch is he will you be uh considering re resale market as investment uh okay so for resale market right is also possible for investment right uh it's slightly more challenging I would say like in general, right? Uh, number one, for resale market, uh, you, you, you cannot determine the inventory and the selection of the units because it depends on who is selling, right? And actually, sometimes in the market, you find that like uh, as, a, as a buyer, right? It's quite frustrating to look at resale units sometimes. Because why? Because a lot of times, right, all the resale units, right, are not priced really, realistically, right? They are priced, you know, like 200K, 250K above the last recent transacted price. Mm -hmm. and, and I share with you the psychology behind it, right? So if you are buying the resale market, you want to buy from serial sellers. Mm -hmm. And who are serial sellers? Serial sellers, most of the time, are sellers that are staying in the house. And they have a plan that they want to move out to the house to buy another place. Maybe it's because to be closer to the parents, maybe because of school, maybe because of like actual uh, life scenario that they have to make a change, right? So they will price their houses very realistically. Right? And a lot of times you will see that houses that are tenanted out, right? In the current climate, right? Uh, the pricing usually is not so serious. The reason is because let's imagine you are the owner, you have multiple properties and the property is currently tenanted. You have very, little incentive to want to sell because you sell already you'll be thinking i want to buy another residential property i will also get additional buyer stamp duty right so unless i am being rewarded right slightly above the market pricing that i want to sell right so that's why it makes like you know finding resale properties uh sometimes slightly more challenging but if you have a very focused area then it becomes easy then we can just 
uh, monitor the area and then we will, we will be able to tell from the advertise, advertisement price most of the time whether the unit is serious or not. If it's yes, then we can go down and uh, check out and inspect to see whether it fits. Okay, so so if you want to know more and want to reach out to Yi Rong, please contact him because uh, selling a, pro a property and buying a property is not as simple as it is. There's so many steps and uh, everyone just want to have a good experience selling their property, buying a next property and move on with their life. Yeah, so I think Yi Rong is the best person to talk to. So thank you Yi Rong for coming again and uh, thank you for all the insightful information that you share with us. Yeah. Thanks for having me. No problem. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, if you need anything, call him. Otherwise, see you next time. Bye. Bye.